Hello and welcome once again to Super Connectivity. I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor, Essa. And with me, as always, is the man, the myth, the legend, the one who makes it all possible, our very own first name agent, Phil, Phil me and Paired. That's the one. Oh, Philip. I, you know, think of all the great Phillips in pop cultural history. We have Philip J. Fry, um, Phil Coulson. And that's enough, man. That's that's two, <laughs> and those are really great ones. <laughs> there, there are more Phils, I'm sure, you know. And of course, when Kermit the Frog had amnesia, He's in Muppet Steak Manhattan. He said his name was Phil Philip Phil. I forgot about that. Yeah, man. I remember these things. I never forget anything. Of course. It's a yeah, blessing and a curse, just like Captain America, man. Ah! Every life he's taken haunts him forever. So so, so anyway. where where do you want to start? You're talking about disappointments and oh, and... so here's the thing, Phil. This is the whole of it. We come up with the best ideas ever. We come up with perfection, and reality can never ever be as good as perfection. And I say this because as the whole Avengers Infinity War starts to roll towards us. One week. One interminable week. You know, it's like they're they're trying to give us, they're revealing more and nothing, nothing sounds good. Nothing is the idea that we came up with, well, that you came up with in your head, Phil. Nothing is as good as what Phil has already given us. And now Avengers is ruined. Ruined. Because they did not hire Phil Parrott to come up with how to make this movie happen. Well, I didn't hear the clip, but but supposedly isn't isn't Dinklage one of Thanos' guys? But they're like, they heard him say two words. Are we sure it was Dinklage, though, from those two words? Yeah, I don't. Well, he's going to tell you. Here's honestly, and this is what... I think they're troll I think they're literally trolling us. <sighs> that they decided to do this thing cuz here's the thing there was no fanfare behind it. Mm-hmm. But suddenly everyone's saying, "Oh, that sounds like Dinklage." And you know what that tells me? They had Dinklage say those lines. It's a completely different guy playing uh what Corvus Glaive. Mhm. In the in the uh film and they had Dinklage read, "I can't." Just because they thought it would be funny to troll us, Phil. To troll us, to, 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 to hurt us. I, You and me personally. To as, hurt I, us. As much as I wanted Mephisto, I, I was like, oh, we're probably thinking too grandiose. They're probably not going to go there, at least not yet. But, I mean, if... if not he, yet, Phil. If, it's, it's the third of the four films they're going to do. If not now, when? Maybe the next one. I don't know. But... Well, I mean, I, I see all these articles where they're saying, you know, that Disney might be or somebody might be interested in, or the was it the Russos they were saying might be interested once they get all the Fox characters about doing Secret Wars? Yeah, I mean, sure, great, fine. That's like, you know, two, three movies from now. Or, I Let's mean... Let's focus on what we're doing today. And not for nothing... You can have the Beyonder in uh, after you do Mephisto. The Beyonder came after Mephisto. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest here. Madonna, the Beyonder was actually the biggest of big bads that came in the 80s. Yeah. Because they say, well, we've already done Galactus. We've already done Mephisto. We've got, you know, Infinity Whatnot. I'm sorry. I'm shouting too loud. <laughs> I'm impassioned, Phil. He's That's moving. Okay. For you on the podcast, he's moving his headphones away from his ears, which maybe you guys are too right now. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, I don't know if like they're afraid if they'd ever be afraid to use Mephisto just because you know there's certain parts of our society that might be like it's too satanic and you know. So it's not like he's the good guy. 
Well, you know, and again, I mean, Disney wants to sell T-shirts and toys. I know. And- and, oh, yeah, because, you know, T-shirts with the devil on them have never sold. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, convince, <laughs> middle, convince middle America about that, too. I think middle America are the people who are buying a lot of uh, heavy metal rock. Yeah, all uh- right. I mean, let, let's be honest here. They're, they're not listening to smooth jazz in Middle well, America. Either both that or country. Well, yeah. But hey, rock country, man. Yeah. But anyway, my point was, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I don't, I'm pretty sure Dinklage probably isn't Mephisto, but I don't think he's Corvus, you know, who gives a poop anyway. Because it's yeah, like, I mean, if, if that's who he eventually, if that's if, who he's going to be, why didn't they announce it a month ago? Or two months ago. Well, exactly. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, that's why I don't think he's Corvus Glaive. Because first off, Corvus Glaive isn't that interesting. Of Not for nothing, Black Order, we love you. You're a cannon fire. And they, and You're it, yeah. literally there to be get your butt kicked by Black Widow. And that character is probably, what that scene is. And that character's probably going to have like two or three lines. It's like, are you really going to bring in a Dinklage for a guy for two or three lines? Yeah, especially not... Uh, yeah, not Dinklage. Not, not, this is not the... I don't... And, and not for nothing... I don't think Dinklage would take that role. Remember, Dinklage has been um, Trask. Yeah. Dinklage has been in a Marvel film. Dinklage has, Dinklage has done this before. He's not going to come back to it for a cameo. Plus, 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 in a movie where you're paying like all these like high, high earth shattering uh, salaries, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Uh, are you really going to bring in a Peter Dinklage who I'm sure commands like good amount these days for like a just on a throwaway character. Well, not a throwaway character, but you know, something yeah, well, on that, on that scale, it'd be something bigger. I, put it this way. I am sure he is the, the highest paid, uh, short, short actor in Hollywood next to Tom Cruise. Um, <laughs> it's still, I mean, after Tom Cruise, who is also a short actor, you know, um, I don't know who's taller between Dinklage and Crudes. Um, that is a common. It's like Bruce McCullough, man. You know, you do a lot with camera angles. That's all I'm saying. Uh, that's a very obscure reference there, but don't worry about it, kids. Go back and watch your Canadian television. You'll know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, here's my point. Um, that, yeah, I don't think they're going to bring in. Well, here's the thing. I'm not going to say Dinklage wouldn't do Cor- Corvus Glaive for mm. fun. You know, I just don't know what the point of bringing in Corvus Glaive or bringing in Dinklage to be Corvus Glaive here is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because if nothing else, if nothing else, Marvel might want to do something more interesting with with Peter Dinklage. Exactly. You know, it, it, it's like, yeah, you know, it's. Unless. It, it, Unless they, you know, if he's just doing the voice, you know, if the character is going to be like, you know, one of these CGI characters and he just does the voice. So they're like, oh, well, we can bring him in physically as another character later on down the road. I mean, they could. But like I said, you know what? Here, 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 here's an even better twist for you. What if Corvus Glaive is actually Mephisto? No. <laughs> or in that were secretly another character. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like. We we don't know exactly Ooh. what. Oh, uh, I I keep I I know I keep throwing out names of who Dinklage could be, but I mean, or here's another theory. But um, maybe he's someone else in disguise. But I mean, there's all these. There's a rumor. I mean, we were just typing about this a little bit ago about. I guess um, there's a rumor that they've uh, cast a actress for a teenage actress for, to play an. Uh, teenage uh, Cassie Lang in uh, Avengers oh, Four. Teenage Cassie Lang, no one cares about that. Yeah, no, no, but uh, but no, 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 but no, I, I, know that, I, well, I heard that they were cast an older Cassie Lang. Or yeah, yeah. Said, oh, that's interesting. But but so, but okay. you know, freaking so, teenage Cassie Lang. Who cares? Well, who cares about you, Satcher? You're not a cool character. Stinger was awesome. Stinger is the only character you should be. Glad you finally became Stinger, and we got got over this whole stature nonsense. So, yeah. So the new thing, so the new theory is the Avengers Four is going to be like some kind of time travel thing, which will yeah. which will which will probably be from the Time Stone. But what if either whether it's a part of the, due to the Time Stone or not? What if Dinklage is secretly in disguise 
Kang the Conqueror. That would be neat. That would be neat. We don't know. I mean, here's the thing about Kang. We really don't know the rights on Kang. Oh, you know, yeah. You know, because this is this thing when you, when you, and here's what I'm going to tell you. You have a far bigger possibility of bringing in Kang into the Marvel Cinematic Universe than the FF as That's part of the, 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 as part of the last two Avengers films. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, because here's what I'm going to tell you. Steve Rogers, Chris Evans has already shot Avengers 4. Oh, I think they all have, haven't they? Yeah, it's all in the can. Yeah. There yes, they filmed nothing, it all at once. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing from the potential Fox deal that is going to be in Avengers 4. But. Unless the they threw it like an Ed credit scene or something. Well, they could shoot that after the fact. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's, you know. Yeah. That's not going to be Dinklage. But the one exception could be King the Conqueror. Because there are characters, and Marvel has said this, where there is a joint understanding that these are universal characters. And what they've said is that they haven't been able to use King because Ramatut is in the canon of Fantastic Four. Yeah, but he first appeared as Kang in Avengers, though. So yes, I wonder. They, I, they, I, they, I, they, I just well, want exactly, exactly. It's a I very just, circular. I just wonder. If, for you, for I just wonder if. The, yeah, I know. I just wonder if the legal thing is like, yeah, you can use Kang, but you can't mention Rama Tut. You know, something weird. Well, like what that. it comes down to is, if they're really, really cozy, and this is the thing. This is the, this is the uh, Scarlet Witch, um, um, Quicksilver thing. Mm-hmm. Where they basically negotiated both of them, and then they said, "Okay, and you're going to have Quicksilver because we're going to kill him off, and we're going to get Scarlet Witch." Well, here's well, and the other thing too. I mean, it's not like the, the Kang would be like an uh, the X Men or the Fantastic Four. If they wanted to use Kang, would is, would Fox really sue them at this point when Disney's about to dump a boatload of well, money exactly, on top of them? Exactly. I mean, that's the thing. Basically, the one thing you could get away with is right now they could have that understanding about Kang. Yeah. In the last two Avengers films, a good, a good, a good, uh, a, a, a peace offering and during the negotiations. Exactly, exactly. You could, that that is an actual possibility. It's an interesting possibility. Again, I don't know if Dinklage is your Kang. You don't think they play play him as like the time traveling warlord? Because no, because and the reason why. I mean, unless you're going to play him as a short person, which you can do. Yeah, why not? Napoleon was short. Have him? Ha, oh, you could have him half the time sitting in like some hover chair or something. Or <laughs> well, you know, you know, many you talk about hover chair. You know what everyone starts thinking about as a role for Dinklage? What? Who has a hover chair? Not, not Xavier. No. No. Modok. Oh, Modok. Yeah. Well, we. we uh, Dinklage, Modok. And honestly, if you're gonna pay Dinklage for a cameo, Dinklage, Modok is the one we want. How funny would that be if they like CGI'd him so it looks like him, but his head's like bigger than every other character in the room? Not for nothing. <laughs> not for nothing, <laughs> Phil. They did say, "Oh, you'll recognize Dinklage when when you see or hear him." Yes. You know. <laughs> And so I could absolutely see Modoc. I could absolutely here's what I could see. I could see a five minute opening scene of of of, of advanced idea mechanics coming in and Tony Stark having to do some mop up work, and then out from the shadows comes I am Modoc of mechanism or uh, uh, mecha organic creature design for giving that would be awesome ah. but but again do you waste Dinklage on like a five or ten minute gag though oh uh, maybe honest honestly uh, unless, I tell you. Unless, he's, I tell you. unless he's okay. pulling double unless he's pulling double duty he does modoc and then he does the voice of corvus uh well you know here's what i'm gonna say i can totally see a gag like that because everyone says you can never do Modoc. Modoc is impossible. Mm -hmm. And every time people tell someone at Marvel Studios it's impossible, they say, you know what? Let's try it. Let's see how impossible it really is. Um, you know, it's you know, it's, it's the exact opposite of what happens when someone tells uh, DC you can't make a good movie, and DC says, and they yes, prove them right. 
<laughs> DC says, well, I guess you're right. But here's Superman. He's got a he's he's an icon. You guys pay for icons, right? Uh, but anyway, that's enough hating on DC. But no, but actually, but that, here's what I'm gonna tell you: if they're gonna do that as our Dinklage cameo, and Dinklage is just a cameo, or just to get, or even, oh, here's your fun bit. Hmm. Here's your fun bit. You do bring Modok back, but after he's defeated, Tony Stark has to go to him, and he's like, you know, um, what's his name? Hannibal Lecter in the jail cell. Ouch. <laughs> and he goes, I am Modoc, the super genius. Oh, your, your pathetic little minds need me to help you defeat Thanos. <laughs> or, or like I said to you the other day, it's like, you know, they could introduce him here and he could show up later in other movies. What if, like, it looks exactly like him, but it's, but it's just his head and it's green. What if he's like the Kree supreme intelligence? Well, that would be fantastic. See, and again... Dinklage as the Kree Supreme Intelligence would be interesting. I mean, he could do so. He could do an interesting voice. He could show up later in like Captain Marvel. Well, yeah, uh, that's a, that's an interesting thing about the Kree, yeah. because the Kree have been bad guys, but the Kree were always a good guys because the Krees were fighting the Skrulls, who were already established as bad guys. Mm-hmm. But because we didn't get the Kree as because we didn't get the Skrulls as bad guys. Yet, when we brought in aliens in, um, yet, yet, when we brought in the, um, the the aliens and we wanted the good alien things, we brought in the Kree and the Kree as this, you know, conqueror race mm-hmm. was great. But the Skrulls are better as a villain, and although we have certainly had a lot of problems with the Skrulls throughout the or the the Kree throughout the years, they've always been, if nothing else, the the Kree. Are to the Marvel Universe what the Soviet Union was to America in World War II. They're not in any way a, a group of people that we agree with, but Just, the fact of the matter is they're willing to help us fight the space Nazis. The enemy of my enemy. <laughs> exactly. And to have Dinklage as the leader of the enemy of our enemy would be great, especially if you have this idea that the Kree want to battle Thanos too. Well, here's well, here, we're all endangered from Thanos. Well, here's my thought. I was thinking the other day, maybe we get this uh, supreme intelligence in the Kree because uh, you know we get some scenes with the supreme intelligence. But then at the end of this movie, like they still haven't said what Avengers Four is, and I think they said they're not going to even announce it the day Infinity War hits. They're going to let it sit a little bit before they announce yeah. it. But uh, I was just wondering if we get the Kree, the supreme intelligence, and then at the end of Infinity War, Thanos tells them he's like. I was coming after the Infinity Stones because I needed to save the galaxy from this war. Boom, Avengers 4, Kree Scrawl War. Well, actually, and you get like no. the you get the beginnings <laughs> of some of this stuff in Captain Marvel. Here's what I'm going to say. Um and we're going to get uh going to get to what I'm most mad about in a few minutes. Uh-oh. But um Thanos could be actually be a good guy in this. Because mm-hmm. there's an aspect of this story which is that, you know, basically Thanos, his or because they give you us, they've given us Thanos's uh, MCU origin, which is that his planet was dying of overpopulation, mm-hmm. and he basically said, well, the smartest thing to do would be to randomly select people and have half of our population culled. And because if it's random, then nobody gets to be to live just because they were rich or powerful. Mm-hmm. They, you know, you know, um, but you know, everyone we will have a fully random lottery. Half the universe, half of our planet will die, and the rest of our planet will get to live, and we can survive as a, as a society. Well, that's why I'm wondering if any of these deaths are going to stick in this in this movie because they, you know, even in the Infinity Gauntlet miniseries, when he got the gauntlet, the first thing he did was snap his fingers and make half the uni- population of the universe disappear, and then you yeah. know, everyone, everyone was re- restored even after he killed, like, most of the Earth's heroes. But what I'm saying is, I think that there's actually a purpose in this. I, yeah, think that yeah. the, I think the idea is is that Thanos is deciding that he has to kill half the universe... Not because not because he, he worships death, but not because he worships death, but because he realizes that if unless we do this thing, 
this other worst thing is going to happen, which is the death of all things. Maybe an incursion. Maybe an. Ooh, maybe. They still own the Beyonders. Marvel has the Beyonders, and that's why that's why we go back to that original idea, Peter Dinklage Beyonder. That the oh, Beyonder yeah. is coming. Yes. Uh, you know, or the elders of the universe. You know, that's an interesting thing that no one is talking about. We have two elders already introduced. You had mentioned they've introduced the champion on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy recently, the cartoon series. Yes, just this last Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, and and the idea is is that. You know, the elders of the universe are the athema to order. Mm -hmm. Because they are beings that, through cruelty and guile, have evaded death. Allowed themselves to live while everything else died. Maybe that's the big misdirect is like, you know, we get this whole backstory on Thanos about how, you know, you know, decreasing populations and stuff. And they're like, Mm -hmm. oh, no, he's going to kill like half the, you know, even Gamora tells him he's going to kill half the universe and stuff. But then at the end, they they reveal, you know, Thanos is like, no, I needed all the all the uh, infinity stones to stop the guardi- the elders of the universe. Yeah, I mean, it's entirely a possibility, uh, you know, or, or 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 possibly that the elders of the universe come to aid the Avengers. And then in the end, they double cross them. They double cross them, steal the stones and say, now, brothers, now we can truly live forever. Mm-hmm. And you know, and that, and and honestly, Dinklage as an elder uh-huh. would be fantastic. He doesn't have to be the champion, and it might be a little silly to have him be the champion. Although it might be cool to have him be the champion. I don't know. And I, honestly, I don't know how ripped Dinklage is. Oh, you know how I, if he's not little the champion, people can get really ripped. But I don't yeah. know if Dinklage is particularly ripped. You know, I mean, they can always CGI him too. But you know who? You know, it'd be awesome if he was uh, shaved his head and they had him as the contemplator. Well, yeah, I was thinking he'd be a fantastic contemplator too. <laughs> and you, know, what's great about the contemplator is that he's all Zen and philosophical, but he's just as evil as all the others. Yes, um, but he does. Know? He did. He, yeah, and say, but he doesn't get all. You know, he's just like. <laughs> he's like, yes, yeah, that, is, just, that is the structure yes, of the universe. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, I must destroy you all now. <laughs> Yeah, well, exactly. And so the idea of, or the gardener, mm. gardener might be a good one for him too, you know, give him give, give him a big old beard. Oh, he can mess with Groot like yeah, uh, it, like it's going on in Infinity Countdown now. Exactly, Reset exactly. Groot, yes. He sent him to his, <laughs> his factory settings. Yes. Now I must destroy you all. <laughs> Groot can speak whole sentences just in the third person. Yes. Well, yeah. Well, of course, because don't all supervillains do that? <laughs> doom must take. Doom must. None must stand before Doom. None must stand before Groot. You know. No. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's lots of things because see, you're making me happy again, Phil. You're getting me into my theories. But the sad truth is, Phil, next week, not not. One week and one day from now, because we're doing Friday, I'll watch it Saturday. All this joy and happiness is going to come crashing down. Yeah, under but the even crushing if, wheel. Even if none of, of our theories come to pass, you know you're going to be happy with this movie. I mean, there might be stuff yeah, that angers you, but I mean, you'll, for the most part, be happy about this movie. You know, I've said this before, I've said it again, is that one of my favorite things about the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that all of my theories are wrong. And I'm just as happy with the results because I mean, of, because it is something I didn't see coming. When it when it when it comes from when it comes to live action superhero entertainment uh, in our current world, who does it better than the uh, MCU? Exactly, you know. Deadpool only only does well because he breaks the fourth wall because he's actively making fun of everyone while he's doing it, you know. Should we ju- should we jump to some Deadpool? Because I thought you said you were the one to talk some Deadpool. Um, well, I do want to talk Deadpool too, but um, actually, I don't have a lot for Deadpool because it's I mean that's a whole month away. Goodness, goodness, <laughs> fell. Um, but oh, one, cool. thing wanna, less, but yeah. one thing I did want to talk about was the fact that apparently, and this was like my big thing about disappointment, <laughs> is that the events of Ant Man and Wasp take place before Infinity War. They did. They did. They have confirmed that. Well, okay, again, rumors, rumors, rumors. Okay. But but it's said... No, actually, no, that has been confirmed. It has been confirmed that the plot line takes place Ooh. after the events of Civil War. 
after Civil War. Yeah. So basically, um, just like so, it's basically contemporary with Black Panther. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The only problem is that it's taking place after Infinity War. So it's like the timeline. So basically, after we see Infinity War, we're gonna go back in time for Ant Man Wasp. So after Civil War, but before Infinity War. Exactly. Exactly. So which is just weird and annoying. Although, not for nothing, Fair Cop. That's exactly how comic books are. Oh yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because as Peter David told us, they don't tell him anything. So I was like, I don't know, they told me if Las Vegas was going to be destroyed, I didn't think it would actually blow up the whole city. <laughs> uh, anyway, but um, yeah, so that's annoying to me because I really thought that there was going to be this tie-in with the quantum realm. And I, I was hoping it was almost going to be like a Back to the Future 3 kind of thing mm-hmm. where, you know, it's like Back to the Future, then the second one and then the third one, and it's like, even though the, it's a middle movie, but it's going to come right on the heels. You're going to be like, oh, this all ties together. Well, maybe they can't because maybe something happens to Ant-Man that... I don't know if they want to show all their cards in the in the movie other than an Avengers movie, but maybe... But here's the thing. If they, kill, if they kill Ant-Man... Well, no, maybe they, or, maybe they kill him. Maybe time trap. Maybe he's time traveling. Yeah, but whatever they're doing with Ant-Man... Here's the thing. Whatever they do with Ant Man in, oh, oh, plus, oh, 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 wait, 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 stop. We've seen artwork for the Wasp yeah. in Infinity Wars stuff. We haven't seen anything for Ant Man yet. Mm-hmm. What if Ant Man doesn't make it out of Ant Man? I don't know. I thought they said. I thought they confirmed he was there, but no, no, no. no. Well, no. They, they, they. There've been all these rumors and innuendo, yeah. and it almost says that there's a that what looks like a guy on the side of yeah, yeah, yeah. On the side of uh, what's uh, Thanos's gauntlet. Mm-hmm. But they've actually not had any Ant Man stuff for Avengers: Infinity War, and it could be that if they do do like you know. Doo-doo. Mind, mind stuff with with Wasp. Maybe she sees Ant Man, hmm. and they don't reveal it. But then maybe, may, you know, here's what I'm gonna say. So I think we, I think if yeah. they kill him, they're gonna kill him in one of the Avengers movies. Oh, I didn't say they kill him. And I, I think just... I think the only reason uh, Ant Man and the Wasp doesn't take place after Infinity War, maybe there's like there's no there's like no time between Avengers infinity war and avengers 4 maybe it's just like back to back one huge movie no oh, time yeah, yeah, passes yeah. between the two movies well yeah but that's i mean that, that that's that's their scheduling problem well, yeah. here's what i'm going to say though what's see in that case then they should have put ant-man before before avengers yeah but they always like to put it in that like i know i know i know they, they time slot yeah. i know they basically they they kind of they kind of screwed their own pooch on this. Is basically what yeah. it is. Is I think that maybe they were like, oh well, we don't want to bump Black Panther. We're gonna put Black Panther in February. What they should have done, hmm. should have really gambled it. Uh, February, March, April. Oh, that would have been great. But everyone would, ha- every other studio in the world would hate Marvel at that point. Mm-hmm. But if you did Black Panther, Ant Man, Infinity War. You you would have, you but, know, and and, and and then and then Marvel could just say we're just gonna sit back here now. You yeah, but yeah, but would, the rest of the year. yeah, but then would you be shooting yourself in the foot though too? Because Black Panther might or not stayed at number one as long. You might have been taking some business from them. Well, yeah, but I mean, that, that, and the but, Wasp yeah. wouldn't have had as much time to do its own thing before Infinity War hit, especially since they moved it up a week. And, and certainly, that's the that, that's the secondary argument. But the problem is that when you go back, basically. Going back on Ant Man is either going to kill Ant Man, as I mean, f- financially, because we're already going to know what happens because we've seen where he is in this storyline that comes after this movie. Might be a cliffhanger though. Oh well, this Infinity, one. I'm saying. Infinity War. Yeah. Here's my here's my big prediction. You don't see Paul Rudd except maybe in flashbacks in Infinity War. Maybe. Or. Oh, 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 oh. So 
here's the thing. Because here's the thing. We know that because we know that Sharon Stone is in Ant Man and Wasp, mm-hmm. which suggests they're going to the quantum realm and they're going to find Janet Van Dyne. And they're going to rescue Janet Van Dyne, but maybe the only way she can be rescued is if Paul Rudd stays behind. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then, and so when we get to Ant Man and Wasp, Wasp is there to fight and to be a hero. But she's also got this thing because, you know, when they call Ant-Man, she shows up. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we thought we were Ant-Man. She doesn't want to talk about it. And maybe in the end she says, you know, and then we get something at the end of Avengers Infinity War that suggests that, and this is the thing, that what's coming out of that, that that image on the poster is correct. That is Ant-Man on the stone. It's because he's finding a way out of the stone. Because he's finding his own way out of the uh, out of the quantum realm, and the only way to do that is with the stones. Unless uh, working on your theory, unless they leave him in there for a while, and eventually, I don't know, next year or whenever they bring him out, if he comes out of the microverse with the Fantastic Four. Yeah, I mean that's a possibility. I mean, like I said, I don't think. Here's my thing. Here's my thing with the Fantastic Four. I don't think bringing the Fantastic Four out anytime. Honestly, here's my honest feeling is I do think a lot of the MCU is going to be ended after Avengers 4. Mm-hmm. I think that there, there may be stuff that carries on and that there's going to be ties back to it, but it's going to be, it's going to be this sliding time comic book situation. Mm-hmm. Where they're going to basically be rebooting the the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the same way they they reboot the regular Marvel Universe every so often with this sliding time concept, and so hmm. you're going to have this and and basically they're setting themselves up that after Avengers four, they're going to give themselves some breathing room. Well, because because not for nothing. What's on the what's on the docket after Avengers four? We've got Captain Marvel, uh, which yeah. is a, which goes back into the past. Let me look. Um, but no, I was th- if they do do time travel in a, in uh, Infinity War, and then like maybe after Avengers four, can they pull like a flashpoint and say you know Thanos or someone says your world? Okay, quit you're, trying you're, to you're, put. Quit trying to put those awful DC ideas into I'm the market. I'm sorry. I'm just saying they alter the timeline in some way. So if eventually they do want to introduce the Fantastic Four and X-Men and act like they've always been there. It's because the timeline's been altered or something. I mean, they could. But more, 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 you know, here's what I'm going to say. Um, first off, Flashpoint doesn't fix anything. If there was one thing that was actually the point of Flashpoint was that it didn't actually fix anything. He saved his mother and the entire universe got schmeckled uh, as a result of it. Well, I mean, unless it's like you either do this or the universe is destroyed. (laughs) Well, the universe was just fine before Barry decided to save his mom. Well, I'm saying the in the MCU, uh, you know, if they pull Flashpoint because there's no way. Was Barry's mom named Martha by any chance? No, no, Nora. (laughs) Nora, okay. Oh, okay. Here's the Okay, okay, here's the list. In Avengers Infinity War, April 27th. Ant-Man and the Wasp, July 6th. Uh Captain Marvel, March 8th of next year. Oh, it comes before the before before the fourth one. Yeah, yeah. Avenger and then Avengers 4, May 3rd next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Spider-Man Homecoming 2 is next July. Okay. And it just has Guardians of the Galaxy 3 in 2020. Okay, so you're seeing here basically there's basically two movies after this, yeah. both of which can be very easily separated from the rest of the Marvel Universe, that when you get back to it, and of course Captain Marvel were going into the past. Yeah, in the 90s, and then most of these people won't be around except for Sam Jackson and Phil Coulson. Uh, we'll always have Phil Coulson. That lovely LMD. Um, well, I don't remember if we ever discussed this. I just saw this today. Did you see... Um, who who else they have cast for Ant Man and the Wasp? Uh, Peggy Carter, isn't she? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but I saw somebody else. Okay. Um, Lawrence Fishburne. Do you know who he's playing? Lawrence Fishburne. Um, not off the top of my head. No. Uh, maybe he's Egghead. 
No, that I guess they're saying he's an old colleague of Hank Pym's, Bill Foster. Oh, Bill Foster. Okay. Oh, good old, good old Black Goliath. We know you're black, and Goliath was a bad guy. <laughs> I know. We all heard the thing say that, but you know what? I think it'd be better if he is Black Goliath. And not for nothing, if they do him, especially if you're having Lawrence Fishburne play him, it's, and then they do your flashbacks to, you know, you know, Black Goliath. Take that shaft. Um, <laughs> you know. Oh, now then, but you see, but then this is this idea. So, okay. Okay. Give Because here's this thing. Here's something they said that got me talking about how I really, really want my uh, Rawhide Kid movie. Um, You know, uh, Rawhide Kid and Mole Man and... Um, Oh, somebody else. I don't know. Ghost. Oh, there we go. Rawhide Kid, Mole Man, and Ghost Rider defeat the original Scroll Invasion Ooh. back in 1842 or 1889. Um, Cowboys versus Aliens. Cow- no, but but good. But good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, and here's the thing is. So once we've established, we start going back and looking at the, these past hero worlds. The fact that these superheroes have always been around. And honestly, the idea of recasting Mole Man as a hero, Ooh. it's sort of a Megalodon Loveless, but sort of the, you know, proto Doctor Doom kind of character who is, uh, you know, noble in his own right, but also just, you know, well, I mean, that's all how, going to be evil, much like Thanos. That's how they that's how they do most villains these days. It's like it's like, you know, not like back in the day when they're like, oh, this guy's evil for the sake of being evil. You know, these days yeah. it's like this guy was a normal guy until the world, you know, kicked the, you know, kicked him down and look what they, the world did to him. Well, that well, well, yeah, well, that's what Stan Lee. That is the Stan Lee beauty. That's all Stan Lee. He said, you know, what makes someone a villain? Being short and ugly. That makes you a villain. Um but, but why does it make you a villain? Because when you're short and ugly, people treat you like crap. And that's why you decide to become a villain. You know? Or you're a super intelligent guy who's been treated like crap your whole life. And so you become a villain. When you get that little scar, the one thing you had going for it was this perfect face. Because that's it, how you make your livings. It's too it's too early, so it can't be. But, I mean, and he's not ugly. But it's, I mean, they could, they could prosthetic him. But, oh, would you ever, uh, what if they... What if they had made Dinklage the Mole Man? I mean, Dinklage is the Mole Man. It's fine. Because you know what? It's not that the Mole Man is ugly. It's that the Mole Man has a lack of self-esteem. Yes. I mean, this has been... This is this is what oh, Dorian man. has said before. Oh, by the way... It, it, Dorian, it, can't, it can't be, but just imagine him in that in that OG outfit with the glasses and the green... green oh, green, yeah, green, yeah. Green. But, you know, but the thing is, you could... Not for nothing... Anybody could play the Mole Man. True. I don't know if you... I, I don't... You know, Dinklage would be a great Mole Man. Um, especially if you do a fully rede- redeemable Mole Man. Mm-hmm. L- like, if you do... Uh, 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 like, like, like my theory of of uh, Rawhide Kid and Mole Man versus uh, the Skrull Invasion. Because Rawhide Kid and his cowboy friends say, you know, we're fighting aliens. We need someone that can take on aliens. Who do we know? And they go, you know who we know? That Ooh. freaking Mole Man guy that's always trying to take over the world. He's got some monsters. He's got monsters and he's got super super advanced tech. He's He is he is your classic steampunk villain. And he's the one guy we know. Look, we, we, we hate him and he hates us. But you know what? We both want to live on this planet and not be ruled over by freaking scrolls. Uh-huh. And so that would be great. Uh, unfortunately, they've already cast Inklage in this film. So unless he's playing Mole Man in this film. We're not going to be able to get Dinklage. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be. Yeah, I said I don't think it could be, but that would have been awesome. I actually always thought Vern Trainer would make a make Vern a Troyer. Movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it Troyer or Trainer? Because there's an N in there. I think I heard Troy. I think it's Troyer, but Troyer. Uh, I thought either way. Yeah, anyway, he was great as Napoleon in um, oh, what was it called? Uh, the Legend. Uh, <laughs> it was the other one with um uh, Bruce Campbell in it? It was the Series with Bruce Campbell after Xena, yeah. where it's like set in the uh, in the uh, in the Revolutionary War era. 
Oh, and before I forget, as a uh, public service announcement to everybody, since uh, I think I put this up on uh, Monday. Uh, so if you're listening to this on the podcast starting tonight, but uh, yeah, April 23rd, all next week, April 23rd through, I guess, Friday, Jimmy Kimmel Live. I guess he's going to have uh, people from Avengers Infinity War actors like all week. There's mm-hmm. gonna be, like 19 total actors he's going to talk to. So I don't know how they're going to like group them each each night. But I guess, yeah, every night. uh just well, that's up to Infinity War. It's great when one when one company owns your television network <laughs> and your movie production studio, and 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 soon so much more. Um, <laughs> and the only this is why this is why AT and T has to buy. Uh, wait a minute. I have well time. Wait, that's that's Time Warner. AOL is trying to uh, AT and T is trying to buy right now, right? Um. Wait, who's trying to buy? AT and T. They're buying Time Warner because that's who owns HBO. Uh, because that's who owns CNN. I, I believe it is Time Warner. It's AOL. Yeah. Yeah, AT- hold on. It is coming up in. Uh... AT it's AT and T Time Warner, I believe. I believe that's the merger. I it, I'm seeing. I don't know if it's it's a done deal yet, but yeah, yeah it looks like they are at least attempting to. to yeah, buy they're trying it. to buy, and and Donald Trump wants to end it. Uh, because oh, Donald Trump, don't do Don, Donald Trump. I'm gonna warn you right now. Do not fight this deal. This is DC's one chance to take on Marvel. You will lose the entire DC voting block. If you try to stop this, I'm just telling you right now. Um, yeah, so I just realized that that basically DC is going to be wound up tied into the AT&T Time Warner juggernaut, which I am now a member of because I'm on AT&T uh, DirecTV now. Oh, Charlie Wi-Fi. Esser, Charlie Esser. What? Uh, I guess uh, one of the big guys in the charge of this merger is saying, uh, you know, they wanted to do this because AT&T wants to launch an, or expects to launch an online streaming service in the coming weeks called AT&T Watch. Priced at $15 a month, the new app will provide live television content but without sports programming. It is designed to be a cheaper, slimmed-down version of AT&T's DirecTV Now app. I'm already paying for DirecTV Now. Okay, yeah, but so I, I don't know if it would be cheaper because it's, you know, it's a slimmed-down okay, well, version I mean, of it. I mean, it's fine. I'm so, I'm so, <laughs> yeah. Look, you know... I. I don't watch any sports shows anyway. And I know, and not that anyone else. I don't watch wrestling anymore. Oh. Like the closest to, I haven't watched wrestling in like thirty years. Yeah, now I, I watch wrestling documentaries. Okay, that's how you know you're old when you stop watching wrestling. You start watching wrestling documentaries. Like, oh yes, I remember. My, I don't know San Martino. My dad's sixty-one. He still watches wrestling. Yeah, but I know, um, you know the the, ki- the kids today wrestlers. They're not. They're not. They're not. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't fake now. But it was always fake. But at least before it was, I was. It was a joke. Unbelievable. It was a joke. <laughs> it's okay, Phil. Um. Anyway, yeah. So, okay. I mean, here's the thing. I'm already, I'm already locked in with AT and T for the next two years. Whatever they want to launch. If they want to tell me stop doing your direct TV now and go to the AT and T app, I'm like, fine. Are you gonna finally have me TV on there? Then it's fine by me. You know, that's my biggest complaint. Will you have the channel 11 on there? Like the two channels I don't get me TV and channel 11 me TV. I can get with my antenna. Channel 11 is so persnickety. You said 11 your CW. That's my CW. Sorry. Yes. Me TV and CW are the two channels I can't get right now. I can get me TV when I turn off the Wi-Fi and go to the regular TV. Mm-hmm. I can actually get a bunch of other channels that way because there's a bunch of other digital channels that you don't even get most of the times on your cable packages. Mm-hmm. Or at least you probably do, but they're all hidden somewhere. But, you know, there's like kids cartoon channels and weird, like a bunch of old, any old syndicated TV channel. It's there. It's like, oh, so it's like right now, it's like we're watching all these old Drew Carey reruns because they just loop them. It's pretty cool. I like Drew Carey. He was fun. Um, uh, so, yeah. So if AT&T buys Time Warner and they start AT&T Watch and, and then I get rid of my, I don't know if I feel bad for DirecTV, 
because it kind of felt like they, uh, they oh, the, the, DirecTV is AT and T's uh, Netflix. You know they didn't they didn't want to deal, and now they're going to get left behind. Because mm-hmm. I'm sorry, this whole Wi Fi TV thing, that's a thing. That's mm-hmm. like that, that's the future. It, it's like I've realized that. I was like, oh. Phone, internet, Wi-Fi. Okay, this is better than anything I've ever had oh, yeah. before. Especially as, you, as they're they're making more and more digital platforms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly, and not for nothing. You know, I, I don't know. It just seems better. I mean, I haven't had it through a really bad storm yet, but even in a bad storm, I think, I think my cell phone works even in a bad storm. You know, mm-hmm. and in a bad storm, cable goes out all the time. Yeah. So, C- cable dish they always have problems in storms yeah not the, everything uh, has a problem in the storm storms anything, are bad well anything wi-fi well yeah the lines come down everything's gonna have trouble but i mean just like if you just have you know wi-fi seems to do better than yeah, and, else. And, yeah and not for nothing you know the only thing that handles the rain is postman <laughs> but you know what's not in the postman's uh credo there what snow no. Say don't snow, stop, snow stops everything. No, nobody works in this when it snows. It's snowing, man. Just stop. No. Speaking of Mother Nature, stop it already. <laughs> Are you getting snow there right now? No, 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 no. It's it's actually warming up now. But no, like last weekend, it was like eighty degrees, and then Tuesday it snowed. Yeah, well, yeah, because you live in the mountains of Pennsylvania. And granted, you're in the lower mountains, mm-hmm. but I think they're still higher than we, we the mountains here in New Jersey. Yeah, probably, yeah. New York's doing fine, but it's underneath the water, actually. At this well, point. I mean, we're going up now. I think it's supposed to be yeah. like 50s and 60s this week. Uh, so. Well, yeah, because it is almost summer, Phil. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Stop it with the snow already. It's been yeah, spring well, for, like, what, a month now? But, but you know what? You need that snowpack so that you don't have a drought. And now, now the summer watch will be, like, 96 every day. Well, yeah, exactly, Phil. I mean, you know, you you complain now, you're just gonna get it later. That's all I'm gonna say. I I I, I like the heat rather than the cold. Yeah, even unless you don't have water, Phil. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. Well, I'm not in the desert, Charlie. Remember, I'm in the mountains. You live in the. Fr- you know, the difference between a desert and the mountains isn't the water; it's the height. Well, I there have, are a lot of very high high deserts. I have I have indoor plumbing. I have bottled water. Yes, because you beverages. live in the first world. But you know, you don't know all that, all those aquifers. Next, he's gonna buy them all up out from under you. And you gotta pay, gotta pay through the nose for that water, Phil. That's why I drink beer. Apple juice. I'm sorry. That's why I drink so much apple juice. It's so Woo! good. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, one other big disappointment I wanted to talk about. Uh, Fantastic Four is coming back. Um. And uh. And I'm already disappointed, Phil, because I had my wonderful, because I had my wonderful fan theory that it's not actually Reed and Sue coming back, it's yeah. Bentley and Val coming back. Yeah, but and then you gave me a whole. See, here's Reed Richards with a when that his beard has gray. It's like well, it's like all beard has gray. That doesn't mean he's that much older. The guy already had gray. Well, that's what I was like. You know, is he coming back older, or is that just like it was a cover? So is that just a variant cover, a th- like a variant cover theme, or yeah? It- yeah well, it's it's him with a beard, and I- well. And then they showed that new, the, you know, remember the picture we got before the four of them walking out, but now they look like, you know, yeah. Val and uh, Franklin maybe, but they look. T- everyone's like, oh, they look taller. Are they old? Are they? Well, yeah, well, they're definitely tall. They're like preteens now, you know. Which is, I mean, I'm, I mean, f- sure, whatever. So, so thanks to all. But like I said, if you're gonna do that, my statement is that no, that's not Franklin and Val. That's that's Val and Bentley. And then their two kids. Oh, that's my statement on that. It's it's Val and Bentley coming back because not for nothing, Franklin is a freaking beyonder. Uh. Okay, Franklin is so much. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if the Franklin is the Beyonders. Franklin's that- not a Beyonder. Franklin Franklin Richards chews up uh, Beyonders and poops out Peter Dinklage. Come on, uh, entirely possible. Oh, see that? See that's <laughs> You really want your? It says you just have him come in an episode. Uh, uh, my name's uh, Franklin. 
<laughs> just, just, just have one of his, um, I'm Franklin. I'm Franklin. It won't happen, I'm but I wonder me. if they could do that if they're like, if as long as they didn't mention his last name, if he could just say, I'm Franklin, I'm Franklin until the deal goes through. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just Franklin. Just, just call me Franklin. Yeah, I'm real smart. Yeah, you know. But you just have him do like kind of a Rain Manny thing with it, like you know, like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's thinking and he's always so afraid to think too hard. He says, well, you know, when I think too hard, things happen. And I try not to think too hard. My dad says not to think too hard. <laughs> yeah, at the camera. <laughs> there we go. There, there you go, uh, Marvel. Period. <gasps> just Franklin Richards. It's like my dad says not to think too hard, and he's like, he, he he tells me these stories. You know, do turn your back on the fox, <laughs> or some or some childhood story about the fox. Uh, Going to uh, that's too on the nose. That's too fourth wally. That's for those Deadpool people. <laughs> oh, and over at Deadpool, we have uh, we have Pete. Pete's our newest member of Deadpool. So is he like, is it, is this like a, I don't know, another character, but they're not re- doing the big reveal yet? Or is this just like a version of Hydra Bob? Yeah, I've heard the Hydra Bob. I, I don't know. I, I guarantee you that kid, that character is a gag character that dies within five minutes. Um, or, or they go full fourth wall breaky. Mm. And they and he makes the point. Oh, they go all Gwenpool on our butts, and he says, "No, we keep Pete around." And 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 it's like, why do we keep Pete around? He says, "Look at that guy, he's pathetic, but he's an every man. Every person in the audience is rooting for him. Plus that they- guy wins every t- every every adventure we go on." And he is the hero. Plus, his name is Peter, so Deadpool can make at least one or two genitalia jokes too. Oh, yeah, that's true too. Um, yeah, the the you know they actually said a lot of the jokes we see in those trailers aren't going to wind up in the movie, which makes sense because they you know they've done a lot of jokes for this because they're riffing all the time and and they have and, they, they did do some reshoots, so some of that might have been stuff they took out. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess what it is is they've got a lot of jokes. Do they have a movie? Jokes are the easy parts. I Believe think, it or not, DC, that's the easy part. You can be as funny as you want to be, but have a movie too. You need a story, DC. You see people at Warner's like writing that. Yeah, write that down. You know what, Warner's? We're giving Marvel all this stuff for free. You can come here, get get our ideas for free, put it in DC films. It'll be good. Tag, tag me, Charlie Esser, Lilith Hellfire, DC... Warners, we could put your movies on top. Just we could. Um, I'll work for DC. I, 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 I got no pride at this point in my life, Phil. I don't know who you have working over there, but we'll give you better ideas for less money. Come on, definitely less money. We're not these highfalutin Hollywood writers. We'll do it for cheap. Just let me cast uh, Lou Ferrigno as Kal-El, or not, or not as Jor-El. <laughs> Sorry. Jor-El. Hey, they let Brando do it. Four lines. That's all you get. But you know what? I could s- totally see Ferrigno as uh, as uh, Jor-El. He'd be as good as Brando was. Oh, I think they said Brando didn't even like memorize his lines. They just like hid like the script in, in on like in the scenery. So he just like was like greening it off yeah, the Brando, wall. Brando, Brando was Brando does not deserve the love he gets. As an actor, I'm sorry. The guy had one character. The guy had one voice, maybe like four modulations for that voice. I am not the biggest Brando fan. He he was basically, you know what he was. Brando was handsome, and at the time when he became a star, handsome okay. and sexy at the time, and at a time when people were writing good scripts. And he wandered in, and they said, "Ooh, let's let's." He's basically, you know, if you know any modern actor, if Chris Evans, you know, worked for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he's basically a guy. Except Chris Evans is actually down to earth and humble and knows where he came from. And Brando was just, you know, <laughs> kind of a narcissist. So you know, I mean, that's the difference between the two. Um, 
Although he got very hurt when Marlon Brando used to make when Conan O'Brien used to make fun of the fact that he was so fat. <laughs> really, Marlon Brando actually wrote to Conan O'Brien in the early days and says, "I didn't realize so many jokes were going to be about how fat I was," and he basically told you know him to stop. He's hurting his feelings, and then you know Conan O'Brien because he's a decent guy stopped making Marlon Brando fat jokes. Hmm. Well, because I'm sure, it really, you know, the guy knew he was fat. Yeah, and the guy knew it was one of these things where you know he had let himself go, and you know, well, he's an, he's an all old that man. he wants. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, you can be an old man, and you can also let yourself go. You know, here's what I'll say: I've always been, I've always been an ample American. I never looked as good as Brando did in his heyday. You know, you know, and there's that thing when you realize you kind of ruined yourself in that way. You know, and so. Ah, uh, that's the sad story of Marlon Brando. It's a Shakespearean tragedy. So, anything else? Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Volstagg is dead in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I've lost all hope at this point. Oh, good lord! I'm still, I'm still bitter about that. Hey, remember, it's the MCU. It's a, it's better than the DCEU. Come on. Well, they never even had Volstagg in the D. I don't even know who the Volstagg of the DCU is. I don't know if they have one. It, you know, maybe that's their problem. You need, like, need a fleshed out universe first. Come on. Yeah. Well, yeah. Because well, I'm. Well, I'm just thinking because I can like think of like six characters in the Marvel universe. Well, that's the that can fill a Volstagg role. That's the problem. They have characters, but they don't have like. You know, they. I don't. I don't know if you really have like. Well, except for maybe Wonder Woman. There's like no character you can point at. It's like that's the heart of the DCEU. You know, there's. Well, there's, you know, you know, maybe you don't need a heart. Maybe you just need a pancreas. You know, maybe you need a liver of the DC universe. You know, you need something that does does stuff that kidneys. keeps everything else running. Yes, you need the kidney. So, so for example, so we've lost sadly Volstagg. You know, you can throw in a Roman Necabo. And that's a gregarious kind of uh, chubby guy to keep your story. You know, actually, you know what? They do uh, have a, a, a Volstagg of the DC universe, although I think they've killed him numer- or like ruined his character into numerous reboots. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Snaps Carter or Snaps? Snapper. He was in the Teen Titans. Oh, uh, S- what? Snapper Car. Snapper, Snapper Car. Car. Yeah. Snapper Car. <laughs> There you go. You need a gregarious jughead, DC. He, uh, well, if it if it's Snapper Carter talking about, he was more like the Rick Jones of like the DC universe. No. Gregarious uh, uh, wander about, yeah, but you need a guy that can be that. You know, you know who DC needs? They need Wendy and Marvin. <laughs> they need to bring back Wendy and Marvin. They need and- to have some fun movies. They need to have, well, the, you know, it's like this. It's not like any of these movies didn't have depth and sorrow in them. I mean, Infinity, but you need to have people that understand that, hey, you know what? Let's just laugh. Infinity War, people are going to die, and they're probably still going to have more jokes than any DCEU movie. No, actually, the Russo brothers specifically said, don't worry, it's not going to be as somber. That, that Infinity War won't be as somber as Civil War. That's what I'm saying. It might be you might, uh, going to be like a universal battle, and it's still going to be more lighthearted than any DCEU movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, because, because DC doesn't seem to understand that it, they're making movies about men and women in silly, gregarious outfits yes. flapping around and smacking each other. To prove a point. Uh, anyway, but that's that's why that's why DC is always going to be second rate. <laughs> they make money though. They they make their money back. They didn't lose money on the project, so there you go. <laughs> if that's your only goal, they didn't they didn't lose money. Just like Dick Tracy, it didn't technically lose money when you counted in the Chinese market. True. Actually, I like Dick Tracy. I thought it was actually a fantastic film. I just think they went over budget. That's always your biggest problem with making films is you can have a good film, but if it goes over budget, it goes over budget. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter how good the film is. Cleopatra never made its money back, even though it was like the highest grossing film ever in history. Because they just they built a freaking sphinx for it. All right, let's get out. Okay, of here. let's call it a night. Philip, how can people talk to you if they would like to? 
Uh, if you would like to email me, especially if you want to do any interviews for the Capes and Lunatics, uh, at uh, <clears throat> nightwingpdp at gmail.com. On Twitter, I am at nightwingpdp. Uh, you can even follow Super Connectivity on Facebook, facebook.com slash superconnectivitypodcast, at superconnectpod on Twitter, and the voicemail for everything, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. Okay, and I just want to say, for any of you creatives who do want to work with us, do you understand, you can make requests. You can say, I only want Phil, or I only want Phil and Lilith, or just anyone but Charlie be there. You are allowed to do that. You don't have to talk to me just to talk on our show. We have things. If you want to talk to me, I'm happy to be there. But if if I'm the thing that's keeping you from calling Philip now and saying, I want to be on your show, do you understand? I can step away for, I've, I've not done, most of the interviews have just been Phil, and he is a respectful and intelligent interviewer in a way that I could never be. So if you, please, have, if you, have, if you have your choice, they tell me, I'll, I'll, I'll bow out. If you want Charlie Esser solo, if you want Charlie Esser and Moz even, come on. We'll do it, man. Although Moz is always kind of, kind of I'll, I'll be honest, he, he has a weird schedule. But, yeah. um, but Lilith is always down to interview, yeah. Yes. Anyway, uh, if you'd like to write to me in that old-fashioned email way the way our Moz and Boz once did, write to me at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. People don't even remember when you have to say all one word in websites. Back, back <laughs> in my day. Uh, and, of course, follow me on Twitter, which is also all one word, at Charlie Esser. That's C-H-A-R-L-I-E-E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle for quality. Thank you for connecting with us, ladies and gentlemen. Please, super connect with us once again. Good night. Not too bad. I think we're like just under an hour, maybe an hour and a minute. And remember, everyone, join us April 28th and 29th for our two Infinity, Avengers Infinity War uh, roundtables. Because if you're listening to this, I'm sure you like Avengers Infinity War. Defenders Infinity War? Avengers, I said. Okay, I heard Defenders. Maybe I mumbled it, but... I'd like to see the Defenders in the Infinity And I, I believe Charlie Esther said he'll show up for both. If you ask, yeah, I'll be there. Because Lilith will not, because she... So DC.